One of the biggest concerns that everyone heard throughout the transfer window was that Leeds United do not have a creative game changer that can adjust a game and make sure that the Whites win. However, I have a little bit of a theory. Leeds United already have their game changer and that is Willy Nonto. Stick around throughout this entire video and you will find out why and if you disagree just let me know in the comments below but this is going to be a tactical breakdown, a little bit of a comparison between a couple of systems and before I get into it I need to say thank you to someone and that is to Evie at Discourse of Peacocks for inspiring the video. We were discussing on Just Joe stream a couple of weeks ago how Leeds United don't have any game changes strictly and this sort of like brought that conversation to mind and inspired the video after seeing Willy Nonto's performance the other day. So if you're seeing this just let me know what you think and yeah, it's good having you on the stream today as well. Anyway, diving into it. First, we need to talk about the context, and the fact of the matter is, recently, Willy Nonto's style has been questioned. A lot of people saying that he faffs around on the ball a little bit too much, he's a little bit indecisive, and the doubts around him have really begun since the preseason drama when he refused to play, but he seems to have like mentally grown since that and adjusted the way that he's handling himself and taken things forward in a good way. Brilliant. That is the mental side of his game out of the way, now it comes to getting the physical footballing stuff done too. However, he's been held out of the side by Dan James so far this season, which, easy to see why, Dan James has been effectively unplayable. However, I think Willy Nonto changes Leeds United's game literally, completely, thoroughly, because of the way that he plays. And I'm very sorry, this might get a little bit nerdy, but I'm going to try and explain everything to take you with me throughout the discussion. So first up we need to talk about zoning on a pitch. This is going to be a weird one. Is this going to work? I will go with... I've got to pick a layout now. Is that big enough? That'll do. First off we need to talk about some facts about zoning. The coaches break down a football pitch into zones being 15 zones in each side of the pitch. This gives a better idea of the shape of an attacking team and where a threat is coming from and how exactly you can deal with it and that is where zone 14 comes in. Specifically that is zone 14. Right here, right here. They're also known as the half spaces because they are wide space, central space, half space, and you're not quite in the box either. Basically the space between the six yard box, 18 yard box, all the way up until roughly the edge of the final third. And we have to look at the way that we deal with it with both Dan James and with Willie Nonto. So specifically this is the case of with Dan James. When you have Dan James, you're not going to pick a player that is necessarily going to cut in. He focuses on playing out wide, uses his pace to get to the byline, fires a ball in, ideally for Patrick Bamford. Fantastic, he's got lots of assists this season so far, scored plenty of goals. Brilliant. However, what you will notice is that he very rarely targets zone 14. You won't see him in this area very often, and that means that the threat is a little bit unbalanced as we go. For example, something I noted in the match the other night against, who the hell did we just play? Bristol City. Um, was Archie Gray from right back, would invert quite a lot when he's playing with Dan James. He will cut inside James because James is sticking out wide trying to take on the left back because he prefers to isolate a defender. And that is completely sensible when you're Dan James because that's what he can do. That's why Archie Gray only inverts when he's paired with Dan James rather than overlapping on the outside and trying to find the byline this way. Now, on the other flank, you've got Somerville who likes to sort of dribble at a centre-back defensive midfielder cut in from this sort of area and attack. Furpo we know will overlap. He always does this. It's constant. I think he does it without realising he's just sort of like a child that sees an opportunity and I love it. Anyway, with Willy Nonto, things are very much different. So this is the lineup with Nonto on the pitch and he heavily prefers his left foot. He's someone that isn't necessarily good on his right. We saw a couple of times last night he tried to put in crosses with his right and they went a little bit too close to the goalkeeper it's not his more comfortable foot, and that means that he likes to cut in a lot more. And when Nonto cuts in, this brings zone 14 into play a little bit often, so he is occupying this central defensive midfielder and the centre-back a little bit. Because what's going to happen most of the time is when we go back to the Dan James system of staying out wide, you get left-back dealing with it, CDM can come across, deal with it, and your striker has to deal with two central, uh, sorry, centre-backs. This way around, Nonto cuts inside, your left back is dealing with Gray, and a centre back potentially has to come over because if they see their CDM's in trouble, they don't want Nonto running into free space. This, I think, is very good for us, to be honest, and it more effectively applies, uh, applies pressure across the front line. So, consider each zone by zone. Bamford here, 
covering these two. Somerville, we've already said, cuts inside, deals with these two. Furpo overlaps, deals with the wide pair. Nonto is cutting inside, dealing with these, and you've got Gray dealing with the outside, and then you've got to wonder what's happening with Jorginho Ruter, because every zone is apparently accounted for, and that is where I think Nonto completely changes the way that we play. You're not waiting for Gray to push up to occupy this space, because if Gray doesn't push up, that becomes Ruter's job. And Nonto pushes out wide, and you've not got any more sort of overpowering like bits of positioning going on. Instead, you've got one player, each segment, fairly easily dealt with this way, Nonto on the inside, Gray out wide, Ruter has an effectively free role to go wherever he wants. Not only does Willy Nonto change the way that defenders need to deal with him, but he changes the way that the rest of the attacking unit is able to play with him. And I think it works really effectively. Archie Gray can ultimately overlap as well, using his preferred foot. He is right-footed. When he's underlapping, he's got to receive the ball on his right and somehow work it off his left again to get that ball working, where like you're going to be more left-footed when you're a little bit more inside. On the right wing, he's able to completely use his preferred foot, and that's why he was able to get some nice little bits of footwork going in that last match. It literally changes the way that we play. So, ultimately, I think that Nonto is a game-changer in the way that he completely transforms our attacking patterns. And as we saw last night, when we created chance after chance after chance from all over the pitch, it works. The fact of the matter is, we are a lot more sort of thorough in terms of dealing with attacking areas. I know overloads are fantastic and they can drag defenders all around the place, but as does making sure that you have a player in every single dangerous area. And in addition to that, you also note that Nonto and Retire are happy to float completely. At the start of the second half yesterday, right before Nonto scored, Retire was on the right wing and Nonto was in the 10. That just gives defenders even more to think about. So. He's a game changer in that he transforms our attacking patterns and we are not playing the same tactical game as we were before. For the team, I think he might be best suited to the right, even though he might prefer to play off the left-hand side because he's ultimately left-footed. I think him cutting inside and providing a little bit of danger from there is the better solution. But ultimately, I want to know what you think because this entire thought process in my head came from what someone else said. I kind of want to know what is going on in your heads in the comments, so just let me know down below what you think about whether Nonto should be playing on the right or the left, whether or not you prefer the James system or the Nonto system. I'm not saying either of them are strictly better, but Nonto's way of playing makes us distinct from the way that James plays, and it just provides us a few more opportunities to change things up as games go. Something we need to pay attention to. Anyway, Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I will see you later. I need to think of a word now for the people that have stuck around. Um, stick the word invert in the comments. That'd be a fun one. Yeah, invert. See you later.